Hello guys, welcome back to another exciting video of Career Advice. So what we are going to discuss today. Before we start up this session, again, please do like, subscribe, share and do let us your comments, queries in our inbox or you can individually comment in the respective videos. So that will inspire us, that will that will inspire us to make more such content like this. Okay. So in today's class, we are going to discuss about uh, electronic bank statement configuration and uh, its uh, payment process, its agent allocation, etc. Basically, how to handle the incoming and outgoing payments for all those utility bills that we are generating for the customer. Okay, and how it's a theory plus practical, how it is related, how it is integrated to the billing segment, etc. Through the workflows, etc. So we are going to discuss it today. Please do watch till the end so that you you will fully understand it. And let us know if you have any queries. You can always comment in our comments or you can mail us through. Uh, that's it. Then before we start again, please do like, subscribe, share, or comment. Kar do, yaar. Thank you. Let's start the class. Thank you. Okay. So. Um... We discuss about how the payment is coming, how we define the GL and how the posting is happening. And uh, is it possible the posting will happen automatically or is it possible that the incoming payments will link to the banks? Okay. Now, when this question arises, so the first step to understand is how the payment is coming. The payment lot overview and other stuff so payment lot is a group of uh, group of payments coming in, coming together into the system so that is the payment lot now payment lots are used to process the payment notification received from external agencies like external agencies there is some third party who is collecting the money like cash disk or something and in one go they need to post everything so for that we use payment lots now, payment lots are also linked to the consistent groups and files. Like somewhere it happened that at the end of the day, all these payment lots are posted. Or um, some DVD, some CDs, people send the payment lot details to the banks. Okay. So payment lots actually <clears throat> coming to, to the utility company from various, various uh, sources. It may be from cash desk, it may be from third party, it may be from post office it may be like whatever the utility collection points so all from all these um, we are collecting money and we post them into a payment lot so how to do that create the payment lot display the details okay then close the payment lot by posting them and finally once it get posted the clarification work list will execute it and the posting process will be started Clarification uh, work list is to understand the priority of each of the open items. So it needs to be clear first and based on that, whatever the amount collected, that needs to be just posted. And during the clarification also, we define the GLs and post the amount. So at the end, the posting process get ends. If it is not um, get ends, then uh, it will be stuck. Like the, there will be some new kind of a process introduced in between. Like some partial payment concept. Open items move to another GL, the invoice may not be closed. So those stuff will get generated. If it, the posting process is end, it goes back and the lot process is ending. And we say the posting is completed. So this cl clarification and posting process we'll discuss again, uh, those are other stuff. But yes, the lot payment is useful to collect huge amount of money in one go into the system. But what would be the uh, the real usefulness of that lot is that we uh, reduce the effort, increase the traffic. And to divide that traffic, we use also reconciliation key. Uh, as I mentioned during the reconciliation discussion, the reconciliation key is the intermediate between the posting and between the invoice open item. So the reconciliation key holds those stuff. They uh, clear out the static line items and they also uh, uh, post the amounts which relevant for the GLs. Okay, and once the reconciliation key 
is completed that job, we need to close that. But if there would be check lot, the payment can also done from banks payment lots and the payment can be done various ways. Let it be by cash, by check, by auto debit, by auto credit that we also discuss how these things will come in and clarification is done. But mostly if the checks will come to clear them, we will clear them together with the key differences. Like the check may be come from different, different banks as well. So we need to define which check is for from which lot or which from which bank. And based on that, the clear will happen. So that means even if the checks are coming, we have a check lot clearance process where we define the date amount, whether the check is valid or not. Uh, we check the check bank, the bank is valid or not, the all the details we check from the check lot payment. So that check lot payment process. So once that is also done, we say it is clear. Now, if we put them in together and see what would be the uh, whole picture, so you can see the incoming check data is coming and then the check lot get created and payment lot generated manually, right? And uh, once it gets generated manually because of the check lot, the bank transfer the data from account statement, okay, about the details and the payment, payment will happen against the open item and the posting will be over. Now, when there is a bank involvement, like pay, check payment is in this case, so we need a very basic document that is called bank statement. Why we need a bank statement? Because from the bank statement, we understand which are valid information, which are not valid information. People may give a check which is not valid in nature. People may uh, give a check which is valid in nature, but the account will not holding that much amount. So. To avoid all this uh, stuff, we need a new kind of stuff that is called bank statement. Now, for each lot, if we go to the bank and we rectify all these details manually and understand which are valid, which are invalid, in that case, we'll put a lot of effort. So that's how we create a simple you know, strategy to, you know, to do the payment lot process. And what we did, we used the electronic systems to clear it. Now we enter all the items, close the lot, authorize reopening happen, okay? And from there we can, um, getting the bank statement, then the posting lot get open. And once that is done, then we'll manually processing them to complete the lot. The lot is completed once all these three steps happen, but in between that authorization uh, reporting and manual processing required. Authorized reporting is like bank statement stuff, and manual processing, like once we get the pop up or, or everything is clear, you need to execute and complete the process. Okay. So we did a uh, payment lot, like there will be some request come from the bank uh, that, okay, somebody paid some check, all to stuff. Okay. Once we get the check, we create a, uh, create a payment lot. Once we create the payment lot, we check the validation for that. If everything is yes, final posting happen and it ends. If there is something no, the clarification list is posting like the rules and regulation, how we need to clear. That is, if that is get into picture, then we'll proceed with a manual analysis and then end the process. Okay. So how to create the payment lot? There are key codes to create the payment lot. And you can use those T codes to payment, create the payment lots. And during the payment lot, uh, either the clearing happen fully or it will be happen partially. Uh, you need to put the posting account details there. Uh, all these revenue details. Are, uh, uh, so payment lot is linked to the incoming payment actually. So we have uh, what we discussed for the tax code for the incoming payment and outgoing payment. So everything may be of two ways, but for payment lots, it's only for incoming payment. And we need to define all the details, all the configurations there. And uh, the major configuration here is clearing account, uh, clearing account and clarification account. These two stuff. Okay, as we discussed, once the checks, the check lot will come, we need the two details to clear them. Okay. So that's we'll discuss. And if there be any errors, how we'll handle that the handling payment error. So next session would be clearing of these payment lots and clearing of the line items and open items. Okay. So, so last means yesterday we were discussing um, 
regarding the uh, payments, uh, payment lot, but how the payment lot is coming? Like, what is the next process? Let's you posted the payment lot, then what is the next process? The next process is clarification and check. Now, when we talk about the clarification of, uh, so it mostly defined the different cases in posting. Okay. So depending on the different conditions, we do the clarification and we have the work list for that in SAP. Okay. So the first point for the clarification is to find the payment. Now, once the payment is done, then we go for the steps. And second would be like check the posting document because of the correctness. So the similar master data like contract account or business partner uh, at the header level, allocate the payment to the open items because obviously as there is open item, that's how the payment is received and then post online and generate the correspondence with a bank. If there is a check payment or there is a lot of check coming together, so we need to uh, create a correspondence to confirm that that check is clear and we need to post that. So that's how uh, all these header data we need to get and then only we process. So if we go to the definition of the clarification, uh, so item required clarification where you post the payment or check a lot, but either some or all payments are not done. Like some are missing, some are incorrect, like uh, some are extras. Because there are when we pay a payment lot, there are multiple contract accounts, multiple open items. And against that, these postings will happen if some posting is not possible or some uh, new scenarios arises because of missing of, or incorrect of data or some wrong customization, then the clarification come into picture and they'll check and clarify the work list. Okay, so that's how we clearing the open items against the payment. If, if the process of clarification work list, which is useful to transfer the items, for that we put all these items in between the uh, in between the payment collection and posting, there will be interim account. Okay, so interim account where we hold the values like uh, uh, during the invoicing. I mentioned for open item posting, we are using the uh, uh, what we call that uh, the key the reconciliation key. Similarly, for the final posting before final posting, we are holding them in between an interim uh, account. Okay, and once all details are clear and clarification cases are over, then we post that. So that is the basic use of the clarification or uh, clearing of the data. Now you can see in this diagram when the incoming payments are coming. So the incoming payments will come uh, from the different sources like let it, this is coming from the cash desk or cash journal. We will discuss the cash desk and cash journal in detail and there are different operations are there also. So let's coming from there, okay, or from bank. Now all this need to go to the clearing control. Clearing control get the payment lot in a check from the banks or direct cash from the cash desk journals, okay. Now the clearing control holds all the you know, rules for clearing rules. Now if we have a posting amount which need to get clear, so based on that the clearing will happen. But if there is any open items or any amount which is coming, but we are not able to understand for which open item it, it came, then we proceed for the clarification classes. Okay, so clarification classes is doing nothing. It will just reconfirm uh, or recheck. Let it be somebody need to pay a check of 100 rupees, but he put a zero extra. Instead of 100, it came one uh, 1,000. So clarification class understand based on the contract account for which amount is more. So once this is coming, so it will come to the you know, manual post reprocessing. So either you get all these information that this much is already available, extra more. So do you need to uh, refund, return, whatever processes you need to execute manually or you need to reconfirm. So clarification cases, we need to get reconfirmation. If everything is done, the repayment will be done. Like in our case, if there is instead of 100, 1000 is paid, so we'll repay back to the bank of 900 rupees. But the validation need to be done from from somebody at the uh, uh, at the finance department will reform that. It can be developed through workflow or uh, auto generated information. Uh, if the data is correct, like hundred is should become and it came hundred, but the open item is not there because of some region, so we'll clear it through the clearing control and post it to the ledger. Okay.
So that's where the uh, clarification cases come into picture. Now, mostly it, it reduces the dispute, increase the transparency, and provide the uh, actual clearing control. Like we have clearing control rules, but clarification, if something is not cleared at the clearing control, we can do at the clarification by validation and checks. You can see the clearing control is responsible for automatic allocation of payment to the open item. Right, whenever we pay, automatically it will clear the open item. The clearing control logic can be used to various processes of the transaction, but if there is any problem arises, it will move to the workflows. Now, workflows means it will come to the uh, clarification, and there are two standard workflows, which is uh, two type of workflow for the clarification of the payment lots. So one is standard workflow, which is WS21078, and other workflows. So these are as for ECC 4.7. Now ECC 6.0 also follow the same, but it has more enhanced workflow. Okay. Uh, so apart from clarification, we also need to understand the payment coming. Like in the diagram, you can see there are two parts. One is cash test, other one is bank. Now bank, we understand from the details from which bank it is coming. Um, but similarly, we need to understand the allocation of the agent. Okay, because we have to do the manual processing. Now there, we need to understand from which cash desk it is coming, who is authorizing and uh, who is clearing the workflow. Okay, so now to allocating the dispute, I'm just telling the dispute because it is into the clarification uh, work list. So once it is coming into the clarification work list to, uh, to, uh, to allocating the dispute, we need to determine the agent. Let it be in a, in a, um, support center there are four five persons who can clear this or who can check who can confirm who can do all the calls to different different organizations and understand okay this payment is done correctly so that means we need some manual intervention where we are allocating the agent so we have a simple process of agent allocation after the clarification process so one once we get the dispute auto generated um, auto generated agent determination can be done but if you do manually, whoever is logged in, he can see the uh, logs and he can clear. Like here, you can see there are two agents and they directly go into the system. And whoever is logged in, his name is coming and he is clearing or he is reversing the dispute or sending for the checks and clarification. So, agent determination is a basic stuff, but most of the people uh, do from the centralized repository. Then, once the clarification agent is determined, then the next is the cases related to the payment lot need to be cleared. And all the details are stored into a table called FPCPL. Okay. In a, uh, in a, uh, what we call in Excel format, you can say the work list payment lot, whatever the work list is allocated, who is the agent, the status of that work list, whether it's in process, cleared or logged. So you can see there are four kinds of status for a particular work list. And if it is clarified, okay, so that's well and good. Clarification is done. Then you can um, process that and the, the payment will be happen. Okay. And um, if the open item cleared, that's done. If it is not clear payment on the account, okay, uh, that need to be done payment on the account. If some open item not there, but the amount is coming, but that is valid for payment on the account. Then finally, the transfer of the posting for clearing the uh, account again, the payment that will be done. If some extra amount will be coming, we are repay, repaying back to the uh, contract account and all this process is done. Okay. Uh, if some something wrong happened, we need to get the authentication and resubmit the process. So this is all the administration part and the workflow controls all this stuff. Okay. So same thing, once I, uh, the, all the exceptions are uh, addressed, it will be posted. <coughs> okay, so here there is a clarification proposal. What is the clarification proposal? Now, if you are getting the same kind of errors, same kind of processes, or uh, you are getting the same kind of work list uh, issues or exceptions during the payment lot, so you can um, create the clarification proposal. Okay. So basically, whatever the common or best practices based on that, the SAP provides the clarification proposal. So it started with the selection from the payment lot. Clarification proposal 
settings are there there we set like first we need to analyze the note to the pay note means a small address to the uh, to the customer who is paying okay business partner with same bank details so note is mostly like correspondence is going outgoing from the utility to customer similarly notes are coming from customer to the uh, utility okay so from the net note analysis you can understand okay there are some disputes some errors business partner with same bank details so you communicate with the bank and what were the bank details you have you can authenticate authorize those details evaluate of the similar clarification case now if there is any previous cases which are already very similar to that type of case you can consider that case and do a clarification proposal based on that now if there are exceptions for a particular account we can put them apart so exception account for payment clarification we can put into a separate segment so what will happen that will be useful to uh, clear the errors okay and we will clear the error by searching those accounts and the error detail and finally once everything is sorted we identify which is the account what is the open item what are the details we need to uh, get the clarification we need to check the total amount how much due amount is there and the uh, last payment okay so if all this is done then we will proceed for the uh, clarification proposal because if historically all informations are there then we can generate um, different different processes like the partial clearance or clearing the open items so if somebody is paid less we proceed with the partial payment somebody is paid uh, as per the open item then we clear that a payment on the account like once it's done the process next process will be the account need to be get posted against that open items okay and that will clear your account clearing process will come into picture which is called clearing control and uh, once clearing control is over uh, so your posting is clear but if there is repayment need to be done so the repayment process will be activated and the amount need to be repaid repaid uh, but after this we need to send a correspondence to the contract account to give them information that all these details are correct so if you go with a diagram repayment request okay so it will be look like this uh, like a uh, from the lot payment to uh, till the posting happened okay so you can see we have the lot payment we discussed that yesterday after lot payment the posting processes start execution if there would be automatic lot payment we have work uh, clarification work list started and if there would be any dispute or any um, any issue that would be put into the clarification bucket even from the uh, or, uh, posting process also you may get some exception to put them into clarification bucket and from the clarification bucket we do the, all these analysis what we discuss um, then the payment request generated if the clarification are done and the uh, like mostly people who pay installment or people who do the emi if they miss the date even after the missing of the date also we generate a request to the customer for the repayment okay so in that case also we generate the request for the repayment and they re pay it back okay uh, and we give them a new time and if there is the extra amount we also uh, uh, from the repayment indicator so we also return back to the customer and for that we are executing the repayment run okay so if something is uh, not clear we clear that repayment happened that is well and good if something is more also do a repayment and once that is done the repayment the outgoing payment document generated okay for the customer who paid more or uh, we need to owe something so we do a outgoing payment document for that person then posting process uh, it's like for the posting process we need majorly two stuff one is the contract account and second is the open item so this is happen at the FICA level so you can see in this diagram there is a contract account which has some open items so in the step one you can see there is amount is open so bank paid something 50 right now you have uh, 50 means as we have double entry system if we there is an open item of 50 we need to get the money also 50 okay so the revenue we can say 50 the bank paid 50 auto cleared and everything is done if it is a cash clearance uh, there is a you know, 50 somebody paid by cash cash clearance happened 
50 50 then if any receivable like some check or cards then 50 50 would be clear so in any type of cases whether it's bank payment cash payment or any other receivables uh once we get the amount cleared against the open item it get clear and the posting needs to be happen but there are different ways of posting so we'll study what are the incoming ways of posting or repayment now that is a simple of uh, posting Good. but move on so <clears throat> now this whole whatever we are doing during the, the control and repayment so we have a clarify for that okay so we have it uh, all these against all these bps we have document we have amount and they come to our uh, list credit list generated and then we have uh, our uh, clarification credit details so now uh, uh, when we are doing some credit to do the credit we need to give some uh, uh, region some some cause or why we are clarifying that amount okay so like the repayment we paid because it, it came wrongly similarly even if other places also you can uh, remove the amounts like one of the popular is write off write off means we clear that amount means we we just close that uh, similarly common each pay somebody is paid so we get clarified that amount is closed clear clear means uh, against the open items everything is get posted now pay and clear uh, what is the basic difference is uh, pay means uh, already if, uh, what we say before the date uh, it's paid means with, with your time limit it is done okay cleared uh, cleared means that is also within time limit like uh, uh, but it is uh, how i'll explain both almost same but uh, uh, Clearing means uh, it may be partially or it may be fully as well, whereas paying is completely. And um, a transfer is like, uh, it's from the bank, credit uh, check loss, okay. Whereas pay, clear, transfer, everything can happen from the cash case, okay. Then finally, write-off. Write-off, we are closing then. And apart from that, whatever money is remaining, for your credit control or credit process that also we need to get from the clarify work list and the letter which you need to send like somebody is not paid we send them a new date if possible if somebody is overpaid we need to send a letter uh, all the stuff we also get generated from the clarify uh, work list so it's almost workflow kind of that so you can see the following functions of credit use as clarified for uh, business partners one is credit clarification is credit processing now credit clarification as we understand uh, we have different type of uh, credit clarification credit process is mostly the run for those uh, clarification executions of those clarification so mostly that is happening in a mass activity uh, we have some processes we need to fill the headers and details and that's how we generate the credit list and once the credit list generated we send to that credit processing okay uh, credit that uh, was directly included in the clarification work list as a result of customizing setting so whatever the um, credit clarification we are putting or conditions we are putting that is because of the customization so what are the configurations of customization we need to do we need to go to incoming outgoing payment processing okay and there we need to set up all these details Okay, so let's see uh, once are the SPR on okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to show you that uh, SPR screen only. Um,
Mm -hmm. It should come to the incoming payment. Contract account receivable and payable, incoming outgoing payment processing. Incoming outgoing payment processing. Let's put in survey, but incoming outgoing payment control. So are you able to see somewhere it's incoming outgoing payments? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think that picture from IUT 2.0, but as for that IUT, here I can see the incoming outgoing. Okay, let me check one second the screen. Uh, default value for the lot, define clarification account. So I can directly put the clarification account. Status. Okay, so you can see here I got that link. It's under payment. So under payment, we have pay process incoming outgoing payment, and below that we have all the clarification configuration related to the payment lot. Okay. Business transaction payment. Let me go back and come back again. So hopefully that will be clear the details. Okay, so we have uh, contract account receivable and payable, basic functions, payments,
Again, I missed. So define clarification in PD process incoming outgoing payment. So now here for clarification definition, like it again linked to the chart of account. I'm just uh, using the existing one of the chart of account, ENST, to check so the rules they followed here. ENST. Okay, they didn't allocate anything. Uh, no clarification rules are here. Even no bank account is allocated, currency or company code. So if you want to add or link with this, so you can add, but we need to create the details. Company code we have, currency we have, bank clearing account we need to create one. Bank clearing account for the payment loss. So there are some account already there and we need to allocate that. So that is the for ENST it is 00051. They are created. Similarly, we, we can create for our own uh, chart of account and allocate that. So now, to allocate the ledger, bank general ledger, we need to create a general account for the bank. We need to create a general ledger for the bank and then only you can allocate that ledger against your uh, company. Okay, so that's again, we need to go back and create the general ledger, allocate that to company, and then we can allocate that here for the banking. So, as we discussed, it will be an uh, intermediate uh, uh, ledger which will be useful for clearing configuration. Okay. Now that's how it is. Uh, then we'll proceed for the next one. Uh, any questions, queries, or you explore and let me know if you have any queries. All right. Now that is for the um, incoming for customization, payment customization. Similarly, at the um, at the process level, also you can customize because we have two processes. Uh, as we discussed, one is credit clarification, what you need to do here, and then process uh, incoming process customization. Process customization is again business transaction under process. Let's check that. I can see the business processing. Uh, business transactions processes. Business transactions and processes.
let's find from the search. Yes, yes, yes. Clarifications are again uh, based on the uh, based on the companies if they have their own rules. Otherwise, they follow the control clearing, and so that they do all these payment and clearance. But uh, based on different companies, they also introduce the clarification control access control. Yes, six seconds. No, uh, it's not the correct path actually. It's coming under prepaid processing. Okay. I'm not getting the path right now, but you can explore and uh, just check. So once you configure all these customization, uh, that is done for the incoming payments for clarification. Now, these incoming payments, where it come? It come from, as we discussed, from banks, it come from cash disk. So one of the source is cash disk, and that cash disk, we need to understand how it works. And what are the other functions under cash disk? Okay. 